it's been a uh, it's been a pretty sad week for Judy and I. Um, about what 14 years ago when we first met up, uh, I just got a new pup. I called him Chocky. Well, we lost Chocky the other day, and uh, friends of ours came in to check the property because we've been away for a fair bit, and uh, they found Chocky really badly mauled, and um, yeah, he died soon after. It looks like he's run in with some of the wild dogs that have just moved in back into the area here, and uh, he came off second best. Now, we're gonna go out now and try and catch these dogs, and it's not a vendetta on any point because they were only doing what they do best, the wild dogs. And uh, old Chalky, well, he would have picked a fight. I know that if he'd gone out and, and come face to face with some dingoes, he would have picked a fight. So he was only doing what he does best. But anyway, we lost him and uh, yeah. It's like a passing of a, uh, an era for us because he's done so much, hasn't he? He's been with us on scrub bull hunts and, and many pig hunts, um, chittle deer, red deer, you name it. He's been our, our sort of main companion for 13, 14 years. Anyway, uh, what I'll try and do is, is detail the uh, sets we put in down here and try and catch these dogs because I got a call last night from one of our next door neighbours and they've lost three calves so far. One they found yesterday was all chewed up and it died just soon after they got it back to the yards to try and get it treated. So uh, yeah, we've got to do something about it. So let's see what happens over this next uh, week or more. And uh, we'll try and, yeah, keep you um, a part of it if we can. And thank you, we, we didn't realize that our trapping uh, series of of clips would be as popular as what it has turned out to be. We thank you very much for the interest that's been shown, and uh, it was never intended as a uh, as an educational or, or a tutorial. Even it was just showing people what we do, and uh, we really appreciate all the comments that we've had. We haven't had a chance. We've been away so much, and we've been away from internet reception. We haven't had a chance to look at the comments to even uh, respond to them till. Uh, um, two nights ago, three nights ago, and we found that they'd been switched off. Our admin had switched them off until we could get a look at them. So, so we apologise for that. We'll try and do better in the future. We'll try and uh, respond to your comments as much as we can. Again, thanks very much, and uh, yeah, let's go and see if we can catch these dogs. Skunk, hop in, boy. Skunk. Now this here is our our bone dump for our, um, our deer hunting project. So the dogs that are coming in here, and I think they are coming through here on their way to this other property, and uh, I think the dogs coming through here will be very, very educated. I mean, these dogs uh, know people. They come around the center at night. Um, and having said that, we haven't seen any dogs for quite a while and it just seems like there's been a pack move in. So I just watch Skunk here and let's see what he does. He's scenting pretty hard. We've got a little area fenced in here with a couple of barbed wire, uh, barbed wires run around some trees to keep the cattle off. And what we'll try and do is we'll try and trap, put a couple of traps in that area there. So it's just good to watch the dog and see what's actually coming in here. We'll probably put a trail camera up here later on and, and uh, have a look. There's been a big black and white dog kicking around. He's got sort of red legs on him, big hawky dog. I've missed him now for a couple of trapping sessions I've done. And uh, yeah, I reckon he's the main culprit. I reckon he's the ringleader. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what actually comes along here now. So the first um, spot that I've chosen to put a trap in is one that I've caught probably three dogs at now uh, in this place. And uh, this tree's been chewed up a bit, so is this one. I like it because it's got a natural, uh, with the two trees there, it's a natural pathway through for a dog to come through. Now, I use a couple of different techniques and uh, I see that, you know, some of the comments people say to me, 
the first guy you've uh, they've seen to um, not wear rubber gloves. Well, right, oh, that's that's not really true because quite a few people don't trap with gloves. <clears throat> and back before rubber gloves were invented, there was a lot of really good trappers, a lot better than what I am, uh, that never had any rubber gloves. So they learnt how to trap with their hands. So already. I've taken the scent off my hands and um, they've got dog scent on them, whatever. I try not to handle the uh, traps and that too much with them. The, tra the traps have been boiled uh, or simmered, waxed and stained. <clears throat> but the first thing I recognise with these dogs here is that they know me. They know my smell. They're hawking around us at night time. They're downwind of us. They'll be coming around our centre where we live and they know us. When I drop bones out here, they know that I've been here. So they're expecting my scent. When I do something here, as long as I'm not too obvious with putting the trap in the ground, if I do my work here properly, um, then they're expecting something. Um, they're expecting me to be doing something here. They'll come and have a look. Usually with these type of dogs, I'll try and keep my scent, the marker that I want them to smell, I'll try and keep it up fairly high because I'd rather have them come into the site with their nose up than nose down because it gets them to commit that little bit more. Uh, a few different things like that. I won't stake this in the ground. I just use wire traces uh, that I make up myself. And these ones, again, they've also been, been boiled. So quite easily... That's all I do, bang, and it's hooked in. There's no dug in stake, no hammering, no noise going around the place. Sometimes I use stakes, most times I use this. <clears throat> Some people will say there's a bit of wire there that'll hook the dogs off it. Not really, because this country we've got so many fences, there's old wire, there's cattle fences everywhere. These dogs are used to wire on the ground, they're used to navigating through wire. So it doesn't worry too much. Again, it's something, these dogs are like habitual criminals. They will, they will come back knowing that there's something going to be there. If they've seen some of their friends caught in a uh, trap before, uh, if they've seen another dog you know, come in on a trap and bang, get caught, they're wised up to things that come out of the ground. So you, you can't do much about that because you're really only catching one dog at a time. Uh, what you've got to do then is be able to make that dog still feel comfortable coming in and um, yeah, just set your techniques, use your techniques to get around that. Understand for a start that that dog knows more about this country than we do. Let's get started. So <clears throat> I'll just leave that there for a second and try and put this ground back as close as I can to natural. I'll pull my leaves off for a start, they're on the top. Uh, I'll try and put my scent marker that I'll use, I'll probably put it on the back of this tree. Uh, thinking that if a dog's coming in from this side, arriving this way, he might hawk around here. But if he walks through to have a sniff on the back side of that, especially if I have a branch or something there that's going to stop him from get coming in that way. If he comes around like that, he'll commit and basically put a front foot here. What I'm going to try and do is then take off the top of the ground. That'll be what will go back on last. That's my last dirt. What I'll do then is I'll take the second layer. Because I put one in here before, it's, it's fairly good going. I'll keep all the dirt on the inside of the hole so it doesn't spread anywhere else. We'll put that over behind there, that's dirt too. Beautiful soft digging at the moment, and uh, 
What's making it a lot better is a slightly cooler day. Because we've been having some days here that have gone up over well over the 30 degrees Celsius. What's that? 100, 110. And uh, the worst thing you can have is sweat dripping off your forehead or something and dropping onto the trap site. That seems to be, to me, the biggest threat that we've got to putting a trap in properly. And my hands now, if I was doing this with a, most gloves, most of them be worn out. Uh, hit some tree roots there, which is a bit of a concern. I'll have to go a little bit wider with that trap set. I'll leave some loose dirt in the bottom. Okay. Just using a standard Jake trap. I'll put foam under the uh, pan. Straight shackled on. And most of this trace wire will go in the hole underneath the uh, trap itself. I just tighten them up by hooking them in the side. Tighten that up. Very good, righto. I've left the foamy back in the truck, so I'll uh, better go and grab that now. Well, these pans have been left fairly, fairly soft, fairly loose. So I'm using my own foamies in underneath that. Uh, on these sets and just putting them straight in the dirt with no paper. Uh, yep. We were brought up using paper across our traps all the time. Uh, the guy that showed me back when I was probably about, oh, I suppose, 10, 11, when I first started trapping, he, uh, he always used paper, baking paper, and he always then when he finished, he had a handful of grass, he'd light the grass and he'd just burn, just leave smell of burnt across the area. Always did that, bare hands, never was a worry. Um, but lately, I've been happier going back to the uh, to the foam sets, and uh, it seems to have served me very well. Right, I'm just going to set that probably that way, hoping the animal's going to come in from this top side. Now, what I'm looking at now is. These, these dogs, I believe, are ones that will expect there to be traps here. I think they come in expecting traps and expecting something to jump up out of the ground. So what I'd really prefer is if these dogs didn't even come near these traps for three or four days. So yeah, that's what I'm hoping for is that they will come over here, there's, we've just had a weekend of hunters, so they'll, um, there's you know, a couple of old guts and rib, rib cages and that there, the eagles and crows and that are coming at them, goannas coming at them, so that's up on the side of the hill here. Let that all happen, let the dogs go through, let them all have their, have their feed. But I'm looking for more like three or four or five days time for these dogs to come back and check for any little last morsels that they might get. And that's when these traps have had time to, um, to settle into the ground, scent go away, everything. And the dog will come back and think, well, right, oh, I've been here for a few days and nothing's really, nothing's really um, caused me a problem. And I want them then to come in and take that extra step. So yeah. I'm hoping to catch these dogs in these traps probably four or five days time. So I'll just firm down around the outside edge of those traps. Some people use uh, a stick. I'm quite happy using my fingers if I'm being sensible. Watch what you're doing. And uh, I see some comments, people saying, oh yeah, if you caught yourself in a trap, you'd you know, feel, more, feel better about the poor dogs and all the rest of it, and that's true. And yeah, I have caught myself in a trap once. Turned sideways, lost my balance, and bang, in the on the finger. And uh, what I can say is, 
after the first minute or so you don't feel too much. Uh, I've caught myself on the foot once, I caught another guy once, uh, they come sneaking around my traps. I caught three of the cattleman's dogs one day and I warned him that the traps were there and he said, oh no, I'll see them. Anyway, caught three of his dogs before he realised that he wasn't going to see my traps. So we've smoothed that down, we've filled it in, we've got no, no objects that can jam that, that set up. Filled in, that's looking fairly good for a start. Okay. Now I'll use a little bit of ground too. side so if there's any overflow there you can bring it in smooth it down knowing that the, the moister soil will settle down within an hour or two but having said that the quickest I've caught a dog in one of my traps was five minutes he must have been sitting up in the bush, bush watching me Okay. Make sure that wire is around out of sight. I'll put a few leaves and that on that before I'm finished. Okay. Now the original dirt. Little ant bed there, some dry soil. Fairly happy with that. Now as a stepping stick I'll just use something fairly small, that one there. What I will do is put something on that side just to steer them off that post a little bit. And that can sometimes be something like a bit of bark, but I think that bark will be better off here. That bark can cover up my... Uh, Trace wire. Sometimes if you want something to stay in place, let's put use a little bit of a stake. A few extra leaves. Around there. That's good. Okay. If you've done it right, all your spare dirt's on top of the uh, top of the tarp there. I'm expecting that dog to come around to stay off that a little bit and put probably right hand, right hand front foot, hopefully. We'll 
shift all that out of the road. Make sure I've got no dirt there. Take the impressions of your knees and that out of the ground so there's nothing on that. That's good. I need something there. I'll put this scent marker probably up. Here's a little bit. Oh, that's right. Ooh. That is right. Whew. Two bigger pieces. I have to rip a piece off that. Ooh. That's just a little bit of urine. Bitch's urine. As she was coming into scent, as she was coming into season. If I want that to hold up there, what I might do is simply something like a stick in there. I'll put that in behind it and pin it up on the side of the tree. Okay, it's up on the side of the tree. I want that dog to come around, sniff there, or even if it comes this way, sniff there, walk through, puts its foot just left hand side of centre, or right hand side of centre, and catch it there. Perfect little branch here. That branch is perfect, right? And that just steers that dog through. Okay.